Hi there everybody, this is Mr. Poirier, and in this video we're going to learn how to create graphical user interfaces using Window Builder in Eclipse. So as a final product, what I will show you here right now is we're going to be developing all of this, but thankfully with Window Builder, we'll be able to use their design interface to create a graphical user interface that when we run it, it will consist of three J buttons, which then will change set visible to one of three J panels below. And the goal here is to give you some inspiration how easy it is to create a functional graphical user interface to help you with future projects, including your internal assessment in DP computer science. So let's do it and let's do it now. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to create a new other project. So instead of clicking class or Jabber project, we're going to go into our main folder and select other. And we're going to choose, once you have Window Builder installed, you will choose Swing Designer and then in Swing Designer, Application Window. This is the main way that you'll create graphical user interfaces using Window Builder. There are other options here. But for our purposes, we may not have to actually use those, depending on how sophisticated or how simple you want your graphical user interface to be. A main application window is going to be the main area where it will be created. So I'm going to call this example GUI 1. And I'm going to call it A for me, just so that I can have a different name compared to the one that I had before. Or example GUI is fine. Finish. So there we have it. When we first create a graphical user interface in Window Builder and I run it, it gives you the base code for a blank window. There's no title, there's no color, there's no buttons. And you can see down here in the code, it, when it creates this J frame, we call it, it sets where is it located on the screen, pixel 100 right and 100 down, and we'll make the window size 450 pixels wide and 300 pixels um, tall. So when I run this again, what you'll notice is the window is located at position 100 and 100. If I wanted to, I can make this start at 300, 300. I can make this size 600, and I can make this size 400. And if I run this, just by changing the source code, I'll have a bigger window, and it's located in a different spot on my screen. So we'll use this size for this example. All the code here is pre-generated. And all that we need to know right now is that the public static void main method will set visible the frame that it creates. And notice they call the frame just frame, and it's a private J frame. And it initializes the J frame, making it new, sets the size of it, and says, when I click on the close button, what do I want it to do? I want it to exit. And you'll notice that when I run this empty window, if I click on the red X button, it closes the program like we would expect it to. So what we're going to do next is now we want to be able to add all those buttons and functionality you saw in the example that we created. So we're now going to click on down here, the design tab, and this is unique to Window Builder. When you click on the design tab, you now have the opportunity to drag and drop components that are part of the swing package in Java. So there are containers, such as JPanel. That's the main one we're going to use today. There are different layouts, how you want to organize objects inside those containers. And there's components. So the buttons, labels, text boxes, lists, different ways to show information and different ways to get information from a user. When you first create an object, there is the frame. That's the main window. And there is the content area. That's everything underneath the menu bar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on frame and I want to add a title. And you'll notice frame is an object and down here these properties, these are the data members that I can change for my frame. And you'll notice there's an option here for title. So I'm going to call this example GUI tutorial. And when I look back on my example, it's kind of dark to see, but they've changed the title on here. And if I go back to my source code, if I click back down on the tab, 
you'll notice that it has automatically added set title as example GUI tutorial. So when you go back and forth between tabs, you can edit the source code. And sometimes you might want to edit things in the design window. And you'll get more used to and comfortable to this with more practice. So the first thing we're going to do in my content pane is we're going to change the layout. The layout is how I'm going to organize objects in my um, content pane. And so there's many different choices, absolute, flow, border, etc. The most obvious choice is absolute layout. That means wherever you drag a component, that's where it will sit in the window. So we're going to choose absolute layout. It's absolute. And what we're going to do is we are now going to add J panels. And J panels are an opportunity for us to add content in an organized way. So I added my first J panel. It's this little tiny square. So I'm going to make that a bit larger. So it goes all the way to the end of the screen. And I'm going to change the color of this panel. Let's make it something like um, something not too bright. There you go. That looks nice. Change the color and the name. And I'm going to call this panel. So PNL or top panel. That seems fine to me. Top panel. And what I'm going to do now with my layout, I'm going to add some buttons here in a little bit. We're just going to leave that as it is for now. So that's my top panel. Anything in a panel can contain components, such as buttons, labels, checkboxes. And I want this top panel to always be visible. So if you remember, when I run this, when I ran this project, I'm just going to run it again. One, two, three. My top panel was always visible while the bottom panel kept changing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the bottom panel. So I'm going to click on my containers, J panel again. I always click on the button and I click where I want it to go. And J, the top and bottom panels are going to be in the same area. So I'm going to click add get content pane and I'm going to add a bot panel, my bottom panel. And again, it's this little tiny box. So I got to be careful here when I edit this. It's a little tiny window. And notice I know that this thing has bounds and a height up to 80. I'm going to put it so look, up to 80. So my bottom panel is going to start at 0, and my Y position will be 80. Notice it moved it right down to there. And then I'm going to drag it all the way across to fit the entire window. It's a little tricky to do that. But again, you can change the position of those bounds. And by looking at the top panel, I knew it ends at 80. So I know where my, bo my bottom panel has to start at 80. And now I'm going to set the background. Actually, I, I won't have to touch the background for this. So this bottom panel is actually going to store other panels. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the layout to be what's called card layout. And this is really important. Because my bottom panel is going to have other panels that I'm switching between, it's almost like a deck of cards where I can have each panel on top of each other and make each panel visible or not visible as I work through it. So now I'm going to add three J panels. And I'm just going to click each one and add them in. And I notice I'm adding them to my bottom panel. There we go. And I'm going to give these a name. So I'm going to call this panel one. I'm going to call this one panel two. And obviously, I'll call this one panel three. There we go. And to make sure it's really clear, I'm going to give each one a color. So I'm going to give this one a green color for panel three. I'm going to give panel two maybe a yellow color. And maybe I'll give panel one a green color. That way I'll know if I'm able to switch between them easily. There we are. So I've got panel one, panel two, panel three. And you'll see this little arrow over here. This means that those panels are in a card layout. If I click that arrow, 
it's going to change between the three panels. So now I know I have it all set up properly. The problem is, is when I run my code right now, I have no way of changing the panels yet. It just shows the first one. So I got to add some buttons on the top here that lets me go between each panel. So in my top panel, I'm going to now add a couple buttons. To do that, I click on the components for J button and I just add a button. I'm going to add another button. And I'm going to add a third button. You notice it automatically is organizing the buttons for me. And that's because the layout for my top is flow. What flow layout will do is as you add components, it makes room and just adds it in an organized way. You notice everything is aligned in the middle. It's all centered. I can actually make this top a little bit smaller now because I know I can fit all my buttons there, which means I can make my bottom panel a little bit bigger now too. There we go. So I can fit everything there. So for each of these buttons, I'm going to call these button 1, button 2, and button 3. One. Again, I'm just changing the, the um, properties. The variable will change the variable name in my source code. The text just changes the text and button three. And the text is three. There we are, so we have our buttons. Now again, if I run my code, I haven't set up what the buttons do yet. So if I actually click on these buttons, nothing is happening yet. And I'm just gonna rename this as example tutorial one. There we are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to code what happens when I click on any of these buttons. Notice on the left here, I have my frame, which is my window. Inside my window is all of my content. So if I click that little arrow. And inside all of my content is I have two panels. So this is example of object-oriented programming and inheritance. Inside my top panel, I have three buttons. Inside my bottom panel, I have panel one, two, and three. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click on my button. When I do this, we're going to move to the source code and it's going to ask me to code what I want that button to do. So when I double click on button one, notice it's going to ask me to do something. Now there's a problem here. What you'll notice is it asked me to provide information for button one, but I didn't create my panels until way down here. So my action listener, add action listener for button one, I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna add it to the bottom of my code because I need to make sure the button knows about these panels. This is a very special part. So I'm gonna add a little thing here, a little comment and this is, these are my actions. I always want my actions to happen after I've created all of my components. So for example, these are all components here. And I always wanna keep those separate. So what I wanna do for button one is I want panel one dot, oh, panel one dot set visible to be true. And I wanna make sure that panel two and panel three are hidden. And we're gonna do this exact same thing for the other buttons. Now, you could go into design and click on panel number two, or oh, sorry, button number two. And again, it's gonna create the code for you. And again, I have to grab my code, action listener, that whole section. I have to go down to actions and I'll have to add my code for button number two. And to be a good program, I'm gonna be lazy. And I know for button two, I wanna hide the second, the first panel, show the second and hide the third. And if I wanna be extra lazy, I know for the third panel, the only thing I gotta change is call this button three, 
set panel three to true and set panel two to false. There we are. So now I have my actions for my buttons and I have all my components that I created for my JFrame. If I run this, what's gonna happen now is I can click on two, three, one, two. Hmm, the color for three and color for one are almost the same. So let's go ahead and change that. Button or panel number three. Let's change that color to something else because they're almost the same. Let's change it to a blue color. And let's run that one more time to make sure it works. One is green, two is yellow, three is blue. There we go. So one more thing we can do now is for each panel, panel one, two, and three, we could add things in. Maybe I want the user to input information. Maybe I want to show a label. And so for example, right now what I could do is I could add a label to each one of my panels, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to add a label to each panel. Sometimes this will happen, by the way. You just say reparse. That means I added things maybe a bit too fast for it. You get an error. And we'll add J panel number three. A label. Okay, there we go. And so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to call this label one, LBL one. And we'll call this panel one. LBL two. My label number two, and we'll call this panel two. And finally, same thing. This is LBL3, and I'm going to call, change this to be panel three. And for fun, for this last one, maybe I'll also change the font. So what I can do for panel three is I can make the font really, really big. I can make it bold, okay, and notice for panel three it's that size. I can change the color, I can make it white, okay, there we are. And when I go to my source code, what you'll notice is for those labels I made, three and two and one, I have all my labels and now I have what type of font this one has, I can change its color a little bit more unique for the third one. So when I run my code now, I should be able to go between all three panels, but each one has its own label. And because it's inside of a panel, it'll hide whatever is in that panel. So not only will it hide the panel, it'll hide the label that it's in too. And so hopefully this gives you an idea of some introductory ways. There's many different ways to create GUI interfaces with J panels and J labels. You might have a top bar, you might have a bottom bar, maybe you want to have a sidebar. And this way you can create GUIs that have different windows inside of itself. And you can show and hide information. So maybe you have a maybe part one is where you ask user to enter information. Part two is where you can sh show information. Part three might be where you're able to save information to a file or open a file. There's a lot of different possibilities here that you can consider for your IA. All right, everybody. Well, that's it for me for this first tutorial. I hope that helps. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.